Hi, I'm Karen from Be Creative. I'm excited to be with you guys today at your Crop at Home event. And I'm gonna bring you a little bit of a different layout idea. A lot of us have been scrapbooking for a very long time. I know I have, and I've got a lot of stuff still in albums that need to come out. I've got stuff where I laid it out and it's not quite right and I wanna redo it, or there's just lots of new, different ideas and products I wanna use. So, a an essential item you should really have in your arsenal is undo. If you are not familiar with undo, this stuff is like liquid gold. It is magic. It says on here adhesive remover, but it's actually not so much of a remover as an adhesive suspender. It like prevents the adhesive from sticking. It kind of allows you to lift it up off of whatever surface it is, uh, and then it'll evaporate and it's sticky again. So for example, if you've done a layout and you absolutely hate what you did or you wanna redo it, you can lift everything up. You can pour it directly on the photos. It will not harm the photos. So getting all that stuff out of these old, ugly, horrible albums that are turning yellow, you've got to do that. And Undo allows you to do that. If you've got photos that are turning yellow in these things or these things, that's what we're talking about today. And in addition to that, um, maybe you had a layout, like I had this one years ago I did, where I tried to rip off this picture before I had undo, and clearly that didn't end so well. Had I had undo, I could take off this image, and then I could maybe put a different backing and reposition it. But as it is, I've got to redo this. So let's get into how I can take an old black and white photo, get it out of the Yucky album, and do a completely new vintage layout. Something really easy and fun, working with die cuts and a lot of different materials. So as I showed you earlier, if you've got really old albums, this was a really old album from when I went to France right after high school as an exchange student. And my albums are just, it's just destroyed. It's, it's the pictures are not gonna come up. They're gonna rip if I try and pull them up. So undo is gonna allow me to get under here and it's gonna allow it to come right off. I can put them right on the picture. I don't have to worry. It's just dripping. And there we are. So it lifted up, it's gonna evaporate, and I don't have a problem. I can redo and do a really nice layout if I wish. Same thing with the layout we're gonna to do today. We're gonna to do a vintage layout that's a little more exciting than this sad thing right here. So this is my grandmother back in, I'm gonna guess the 40s. I'm not really sure when, because it's all taped down. There's no journaling. I took it out of a really old album that's turning. Luckily, the plastic does come up, but you can see how all that adhesive is coming up there. So you really want to get it out of these albums before you really lose too much of the picture. Oh, it's somewhat lifting up on its own, actually. That's really nice. I could actually pour this undo right on the picture, and I don't have to worry that it's going to do anything to it. And it lifted it right up. It looks like this was in a frame previously, and then it was glued down. Oh my goodness, there's a lot going on here. So I'm going to use this picture... And I'm going to do a whole new layout using a whole host of fun things. So I've got my 12 by 12 cardstock here. I've pre-cut another piece of black here. Let's get this down. This gun is fantastic from Scrapbook bit at yeah, scrapbook adhesives by 3L. It's the easy redder gram. You're getting a lot more footage on there than you are the little runners at less money. So it's a better value and you don't have to worry about running out. So I've got something like this. I really can't do much to trim this, nor do I really want to. I don't want to ruin it. So I'm just going to add, actually I don't need adhesive. It's sticky again. The undo uh, evaporated. So I figure this is going to be, you know, obviously my focal photo. It's going to be my only photo. So I'm just going to put it right down there. Let's see. And what else do I want to do? I want to add a bunch of fun things to this. So I'm going to use one of my favorite dyes. This is the Hero Arts Fancy Dye. There's a lot of intricate florals going on. Um, and I'm going to use a Gemini machine and cut out um, a design. Let me swing this over so you can see. I've got my Gemini right here, right there. So what am I going to do? Let's put, move this out of the way. I've got my plates. I've got my dye. Let me get him all going here do my little plate sandwich like this. This is an electronic die cutter. Very easy to use. You don't have to crank. You simply feed it through the machine like this. And my plates are very well loved and warped. And that's okay. I just keep flipping them 
and they continue to work. I don't have to be there to catch it, it'll come right out. Okay, so you can see here, let's flip back down here. You can see here I've got this die. It cut it out in one pass because there's so much internal pressure in that machine. And I have a couple ways I can get all the goodies out. I can take my uh, die brush tool like this and simply do a lot of this kind of thing to get it all nice and loose so it'll pop out. And that'll allow me to pluck it right out. Now with, look at that, it just comes right out, no problem. Now with all the goodies that are still stuck in there, I can continue to roll that out and a lot of them will release. Um, I always carry this other pokey tool. This is from We Are Memory Keepers. It is a sticky. And if I wanted to pick up little gems or die cuts to pick up in place, that's what's on one end. The other end has a really sharp, nice point that allows me to poke through. See all these baby holes in here? That's how we poke it through and get all the goodies out when it's time to clean out our die. Super easy. Okay, so I have one I cut out previously. What I like to do, I wanna give it a little bit more of a, a fun feel. I'm gonna take my Ranger white ink. Where is he? I love this white ink pad from Ranger. It's a uh, pigment ink, so it will show up on all the dark papers. It's opaque rather than transparent, uh, permanent and waterproof too, and acid-free, so fine for your photos. So I can go ahead and ink this guy a little bit if I wish. Do a little bit of inking. I should have a work surface and I don't, that's okay. So once I ink that, it's going to look, I did one previously, somewhat like this where I did a lot of inking on it. Now a couple things you can do to adhere this down. You can either use something like adhesive sheets. This is one of my favorites, Scrapbook Adhesives by 3L. You get five giant sheets in the pack. I like that they're six by 12. So if you have full border dies that are 12 inch for your 12 by 12 albums, um, you can do that with uh, all of your intricately die cut things. Things where the tape runner is gonna poke through all the holes, so you can't use a tape runner. So I could just put that down and put the sticky that way. Or another easy thing I can do is to simply take um, a quickie glue pen. You gotta find him, here he is. And I can just color the back dot, dot, dot here and there, adding glue. And I previously put some adhesive on him so he's ready to go. So I could put that maybe, I'll rest it like that. So now that's down. Um, what else do I wanna do here? I wanna add some flowers to this as well. Um, the die I'm gonna use, there's a couple dies that I like. They're uh, the Vintage Lace Collection um, from Sara's Signature, and they are designed, there's like a smooth or a rough, I'm gonna use the rough one. They can go through any die cut machine. It doesn't have to be a Gemini, although that's my favorite. Um, so you would simply take the paper that you have and again, you're gonna feed that through. So I've got all my plate sandwich going on. I've got a bunch of dies. I'll just do one to show you. Put that down, put my top plate, my lovely, well-loved warped top plate, and I can feed that through. There he goes. And you get a bunch of dies in the package like that. And with one simple pass, it's gonna pop out the other side. And you can see I've got something like that. Now I can do a couple things. I can shape it with a ball molding tool, which we do have, or I could just take my fingers and kind of rough it up, twist it up like this. And then I can start layering them using a glue pen and building the layers, dot the center, add another layer, and I'm gonna build it up like this. So I took all the layers and you can continue shaping it and doing it however dimensional you wish. I can then take my white ink pad, and I can add a little bit of white to the edges because I think white is kind of fun. We always ink the edges in dark brown or black, but white's kind of fun using those darker vintagey colors. So I've got this kind of a look. I've got one here. I have another one I did over here. So let's say, I'm not sure what I'm doing yet, so I'm not gonna glue them down. Let's say I did something like that. I think also I want to do some hearts, let's do that. I've got these uh, foam hearts 
that look like this. Sometimes you see the adhesive hearts in a package and you're like, why are there shapes that are foam? What do we do with them? You can add things to it like glitter will stick to the foam. Um, embossing powder that you can heat with a heat tool will stick to the foam. You can add, um, in this case, foil. So I'm gonna take one of these and rather than take it off the backing because I don't know where I'm putting it yet, I'm just gonna peel a couple pieces off the front side. So I've got that exposed and maybe I'll do one more. Whoops, I took the whole heart out. Let's put him back here. I'm just gonna do another one. Pull that out right here. So I've got two exposed. And what do I have? I have my handy dandy Gemini foil. Any foil will do. It doesn't have to necessarily be from a specific company and you don't necessarily need a fancy heat machine. You just need adhesive to grab the foil. So I've cut a piece of gold foil off of that roll. And then I'm going to do this kind of a thing to get that foil onto there. And if I miss, oh, I missed an edge, no biggie, come back in with your foil and add a little bit more. So now this has nice, and it's kind of like gold leafing almost, doesn't it look like that? So I've got two gold, so I'm gonna put that somewhere on when I'm done as well. I also wanna add some fabric ribbon roses. How am I gonna do that? Um, I'm going to use either my silicone mat, which I showed you guys in another video a few weeks ago when I was on here, either the silicone mat, which is a non-slip surface, it's a newer mat, or your traditional craft mat. There's ones by the Suspect Noir, there's also Ranger. Any of those will work. Um, it is a non-stick surface, heat resistant, non-slip. So you can do lots of things with it. So what I did is I took my Ranger mat like this. Oops. And I took my Tombow glue, my Mono Multi, which is multi because you can use it multiple ways. It's either a permanent bond if it's wet or repositionable um, if you let it dry first. So um, I'm going to do, here, I'm going to do it over here. So if I was doing this fresh, I'm going to do a bunch of, a couple of circles. Oops, I didn't clean my tip before. So I can do some circles with this and get some glue down. So I just let this set up for, you know, an hour or so, make a nice circle. I'm making a hurried, what is that, an octagon? We're not sure. But I would let that completely dry. When it dries, as you can see, it's gonna be a temporary tack like this. And now I can make my own ribbon roses. I don't have to pay $8 for them from Prima, right? I can do my own. So now I gotta find my scissors. Does your workspace ever eat all your stuff and you don't know where it went? All right, so I have some black ribbon here and I'm just going to slice off a little bit of that. I'm gonna make a knot in one end like this. Let me trim him up. And I'm gonna start with the unknotted end. I'm gonna put a corner in the other corner and I'm gonna work my way around this circle like this, outer edge first. And I kind of wanna twist my surface so I can keep gathering and twisting. Let me make sure you guys can see, yes you can. So I'm gathering, I'm twisting, I'm going around the circle like this, like this. And when I'm done with that, I will turn, this probably could have been just a touch longer. I'm gonna turn and swirl the center like this and maybe gather him up a little bit like that. So now I have a ribbon rose. So what I can do then is peel him off the backing and I've got my ribbon rose ready to go. Go back to my layout. I'm losing my stuff because they weren't nailed down, right? And maybe he's going to go here. We're going to figure out what we're going to do. I'm going to start gluing stuff down. So I'm going to put that guy right there, right there. And then I'm going to put this guy right here. I'm going to put a little adhesive on the back of him. Let's put that right there. I do need a center on him, don't I? What I'll do with that, I think, I'm gonna put a little dot of the two-way glue in the center and let that dry. And we'll show you what we're doing with that in a second. I've got this one here. Let's put him over here. And he also needs a center like this. There we go. Um, what else? I've got my hearts that I did. Let's find those. We're gonna throw those in somewhere. Where are we gonna put him? I'm gonna take this off the back so I've got this foil heart. Maybe I'm gonna tuck him right here. I'm gonna tuck him right there. I've got another one here. Maybe I'll pull him off. I'm gonna tuck him right here. And my centers aren't dry yet because they're blue. So once they're clear, I know they're dry, they're dry and ready to go. 
Um, what else can I add to that? Oh, I need to add um, some journaling because we need to know who this is and what that was all about. Um, let's see here. What do we want to do? I want to take a black strip first. Let's put this. Maybe we'll do this like, like this kind of a thing here. I'm going to lift him up and anchor. We'll do this kind of a thing for fun. So let me get my adhesive on the back here. Whoops. I'm a little off center today trying to do this. All right, so I'm going to tuck him under here like that. And then I've got this little doodad here. I am going to have to hide the hole. Um, I'm going to use, where did he go? I'm going to use these really awesome metallic markers. These are Spectra Noir metallic twin tip markers designed to go on dark paper or light and really show up really smooth. And there's three different collections, color collections. This one's Antique Elements. Let's get him opened up. The Antique Elements has some really nice um, tones in here. Silvers, golds, coppers. I'm going to use the gold here. And I like using my own writing. I know you can print stuff. You can sticker letter, but honestly, it's kind of fun to do your own writing. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to use the bullet tip and I'm just going to write Dorothea. Powers. And this is around I'm going to put circa like 1940, like that. And I'm a lefty, so I smeared. I should be patient, let it dry. Any other lefties out there, I feel you. So let's pretend I didn't smear, and that's why it's all fun. So maybe I will put this down here, something like that. We're just going to put a little slotch of adhesive here, and that's going to go. Actually, let's pop him up, because popping up is always fun, like this. Let's get a couple of these foam squares like this. Dun, dun, dun. One more. I'm kind of on the fly. Do you ever do that where you're like, eh, I'll do it this way. Now I'll do it this way. That's kind of what we're doing here. So we're going to pop that here. My centers are dry on here. So I'm going to go back to where is my foil and do some centers on there too. So we have a little bit of a, a foil center. There we go. And I do want to tweak all these lovely petals, get them a little more popped up. I probably need another ribbon rose. Let's do one more of those too. Um, da da da. I'm gonna get this back. Once again, I've got my ribbon tying him in a knot, trimming the edge, and we're gonna make come around the circle, gathering underneath, underneath, underneath underneath, underneath, like this, coming around. And all, you know, this is grow grain ribbon, but all different ribbons will work for this. I'm gonna do, I did him longer, so I can actually do another layer, which is actually really what you wanna do. And now I'm gonna twist him in, wind, 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 and stick him in the middle. That looks a little bit better, like that. So he's all anchored down. I peel that off. Again, I used that Tombow Multi to do that. And let's stick him maybe up here, something like that. So I've got a little bit of fun going on. And now he doesn't look, actually, I don't like this. Let's pull this off. Not a fan. Let's pull that off. Now we need a little bit more going on in terms of like a finishing touch. So what I want to do is first I'm going to, I want to cover the picture so he doesn't get sprayed on. So I've just got a piece of paper to kind of cover the picture up, like a mask, right? So I'm going to cover the picture. And what have I got? I've got this luscious um, Spectrum Noir Sparkle, and it's like glitter ink. It's not in a pen. It's glitter ink. It's opalescent. You can hear there's the ball bearing in here. What it looks like when you spatter that, you can paint with it, but here I spattered it on dark, you could see, or um, I spattered it on the gold here. So it's just kind of a fun touch of shimmer. You can kind of see it picks up the light and is very sparkly, very nice. And this is extremely liquidy. So fun for more of the mixed media type projects. So what I need to do is find uh, the paintbrush I had. Oh my goodness, don't you hate it when things are missing? Okay, so I'm going to shake this, make sure he's all liquefied. I'm going to open this up. And I've got this is a water brush just because that's what I could find. There's no water in it. You don't need water. It's just a paintbrush. So I'm going to take this 
and dip it in the ink. And I wanna do a little bit of a spatter, so I tap on my finger to spatter. And I don't have to worry, I'm not gonna get my picture because I've masked him off. So I'm gonna add some sparkle like this. Big and little droplets too, a little bit more. Like that, that looks pretty good. Put my lid back on. I'm all shimmery now. If you're not wearing it, did you even craft, right? And this is a really simple, quick vintage layout, just like that. Taking it out of that yucky, awful album and repurposing purposing it in a different way. So I hope you enjoyed doing a little simple vintage layout. Reminder to get those old photos out of the aging albums and do something new and fun with them. If you go on our website at shopbecreative.com uh, and look at the different categories we have, um, we're going to have a category up in the menu that is all the items that we use to do this layout. The dyes, the flower dyes, the regular dye, the, um, the sparkle ink. Uh, what else do we use? All the different Everything we used, we're gonna put it in that to make shopping really easy for you. And in addition to that, we've got the 20% off adhesive using the coupon code that is shown on the bottom of this video. Um, beyond that, I think journaling is a really important thing. I just wanna to touch on briefly uh, because so often we focus on the photos and, and all the fun stuff we can put with the photos to bring that memory to life in our albums or mini books or our planners, any of that. But really telling the story with our journaling is just such an important part of memory keeping uh, because we may remember what happened, but years from now, you wanna pass that story on to other people. Um, and the only way to do that is through your own words. So journaling is really important. Some of my favorite journaling products that we have on our website would include, um, I've got some goodies here. So to start, the Uniball Signos are among my favorites. It's a really great opaque ink in gold, silver, white, black, and red. Uh, the white in particular is the best white pen known to man, I think. Uh, and then the gold and silver, really great for Christmas cards, really great for vintage journaling, just a really nice, uh, bright, unusual ink that I like to work with. Uh, beyond that, with your basic type of ink pen, like a fine point pen, I really like the Zig Millennium in different point sizes in black. Um, getting into something like the art liner, this is in gray and um, brown, so more of a vintage look, not traditional black, a little different, which is nice, more of a weathered um, vintage look in different point sizes and brush tip as well, so that's fun. And then Le Pen is pretty known, I think, in the planner world as having just a really great pen. It's from Mar Marvi Yoshida, different colors, really great for bullet journaling, things like that. Um, and then also a couple unusual type journaling items. One would be the Zig Cleaner Color Dot. This has one end as a fine point and one end as a, a spongy dot tip to do little dots and accents on your letters to do more titles and fun things like that. And then we have the Zig Emboss Writer. This is fun, it's a set of four, but there's double-ended tips. So you're getting eight different tips of embossing ink embedded into the pen so you can write calligraphy, brush script, just simple printing, whatever you want to do, sprinkle it with embossing powder, hit it with your heat tool, and you'll have really nice raised embossed lettering on a, le a card, um, on your, your layout, anything. Um, really neat way to get raised journaling into your album, a little bit more sophisticated. If you need ideas on lettering, this is a really great book we have. It's got not just calligraphy, but basic um, printing and just different unusual ways to um, add a little excitement to your projects. So we have that as well. I thank you guys for joining me today. I hope you're having fun cropping away and I hope to see you real soon and you can visit us online at shopbecreative.com.